Now this story, um, I remember when I learned it, and I remember it very clearly, because uh, in Achayota, or next to my parents, I was probably about 20 years old. I had this little cabin that I uh, fixed up, and that was like my house. And uh, my grandfather, he used to love smoking a pipe. He was always smoking, but he was always quitting too. And what he would do is he'd come over to my house and he'd light up his pipe, and uh, but he says, "Don't tell your grandmother." And he'd have his have a pipe and. Uh, I used to really enjoy those because he would tell stories. Or it was, a lot of it was about history, a lot of uh, current issues, and a lot of stuff about the environment. But I remember this one particular day, it was very dreary, overcast, and kind of, it was in the fall, kind of cold. And he told me this story. But why I remember this time is that the story he told me after this one was scary. It was a scary story. I don't know if I can tell it today because he got little ones. But, uh, but that's why I remember when I learned this story. But, um, but when I was 20 years old, I'm a grown man, and he told me that story. By the time he was finished telling that story, I was curled up into a little ball. I was scared. It was, it was about the skeleton that comes to life, just to give you an idea. <coughs> but this story is more, um, more for fun. And the story begins here. And again, you see that shape and all those little dots, and that re represents many. You see the sky dome going above us. And falling from the sky, you see snow or winter. And again, that arrow represents time and distance. So this means many winters ago in the past, that arrow going way back. A long time ago, this story took place. They say one day, the creator, or some quiet day, so, came down to the earth. And you see the earth is symbolized by a giant turtle. And that's part of our creation story, where a woman fell from the sky and landed on the shell of a giant turtle. And it started to grow, and that became the land you're standing on. And so anytime you see the turtle and that, that, this pictograph, it usually represents the land or the earth. So Sagoyan so Diso, he came down the time when the leaves start to fall. So it was starting to get cold and the leaves were changing color. It was in the fall time. The snow was just starting to fall, just a little bit here and there. And Sagoyan so Diso looked around. He was just checking out his creation to see how things were going, if everything was working the way it should. He noticed the trees were still tall and still beautiful. He noticed the animals, their beautiful furs were getting thicker for the coming winter. They seemed content. They seemed happy. He noticed the Ngwahu or the Haudenosaunee people, they're starting to wear warmer clothes. It was getting colder out. But again, they were very content and they were very happy. Everything seemed to be in order. Everything seemed good. The sun was starting to set. And he was very pleased. But then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw this creature wandering around. And it was kind of bouncing. And he looked closer. And what it was, was a bird. And he looked closer at the birds. And he saw them. They didn't have any feathers in that ancient day. It was so long ago, they didn't have feathers like they do now. And he saw that they, were, they couldn't really get around too good. And they kind of hopped around. And they looked kind of silly. And he saw... A group of them gathered together, and they were huddled together for warmth. And he saw them shivering away, their little beaks were clattering, and they were very, very cold. And so the darkness filled his heart. He felt sad. He left them out. He didn't think of them. He thought of everything else except for those poor birds. And it was just getting colder and colder every day. And so what he did is he went back up to the sky world, and he looked around. And he found his bag, and inside that bag were all kinds of feathered coats, different colors, different sizes, different shapes, really nice ones. And he looked around in there, and there were so many, he knew this would be plenty. So he tied it up, he came back down to the earth, he put it on a mountain top out in the west, and he left it way up there. Then he came back here, and with his powerful mind, he called out to the four directions for a gathering of all the birds. Or in Mohawk, they call it Ojidaa, all the birds to come. So they came from all the directions. And when they had gathered, they were all cold and the snow was starting to come down. And they were huddled together, their little bills were clicking. And so Grand Diso told them, he said, Oh, towards the setting sun to the west, I brought a bag full of coats in there for you. And that kind of woke him up a little bit. He was just like, really? And he got excited. He says, but one of you is going to have to 
go out to that mountain and bring that bag back. One of you is to have that task. And the one that does this task is the only one that can hand out coats, feathered coats. He's the only one that can do this. And another rule is if you try on a coat and you like it, you can keep it forever. But if you try it on and you take it off and you get rid of it, that's it. You only have one chance. But if you try it on and you like it, you can keep it. But if you take it off, that's it. No more. So, the birds, they had a council to try to figure out who is going to do this job. Because they knew where that mountain was out west. It was a, quite a distance. and Nobody wanted to do it. So at that meeting, the hawk, he stood up. He goes, oh, I'm, I'm big enough. I'm strong. He goes, but I, I hurt my ankle. He twisted his ankle. because I, I can't do it. He just made that up. All day long, they talked and talked. And then the eagle, he stood up. He goes, I could do it too. And I'm powerful. I'm strong. But I got a real bad headache today. He didn't want to do it. He made up that excuse. One by one, all of those birds started to make up excuses. One had a sore tummy, so on and so forth. And one didn't sleep good last night and didn't want to do it. And they started to argue. Their words, their voices got louder. All day long, they argued. And those voices were getting louder and louder and louder. The eagle got up and he says, I saw that hawk walking around. He wasn't limping. His leg doesn't look hurt. The hawk would yell at him. He goes, you don't look like you got a headache. And they started to argue back and forth. All of them, they got up. And it was almost to the point where they started to push. It was almost to that point. Their voices were loud. Off to the side was a bird they called the turkey buzzard. Now that turkey buzzard is so gentle. He's so nice. He doesn't like to argue. He doesn't like to see people argue. He doesn't like voices raised. He just does not like that. So he said... Ran right into the middle and says, you guys, cut it out. He goes, I'll go ahead. I'll do this job. He goes, just stop fighting. He didn't really want to do it either, but he just didn't want to see them fight anymore. And so they settled down, and that poor turkey buzzard, he had it out. Started walking. For two days, he journeyed. Two days, he made it to the top of that mountain. When he got to the top, he found that bag. He wanted to look in. He was curious. But he knew he had a long journey home. So rather than looking in there, he put it on his back. He turned around, took a deep breath, and he started to go home. Two more days he journeyed. And when he got home, all of those birds were just huddled together, shivering away, so cold. Snow was landing on their heads. There was nothing to wear, those poor birds. So here comes Turkey Buzzard. Even though he's tired, exhausted, he knew they needed their coats. So he took that bag, threw it on the ground, and he was the only one that could open it up because of what the Creator said. That was one rule. So he reached in there, he just grabbed anyone, pulled it out, and he looked at it, and oh boy, was it beautiful. Brilliant blue, a little bit of black, a little bit of white on the hat, and on the hat had a real nice point to it. He was looking at it, boy, that's sharp. So he tried it on. It was a little snug, but he said, boy, that's sharp looking, boy. I want to keep it. But out of the corner of his eye, he saw another one in that bag that looked even better. So he took that off and he threw it on the ground. He could never put that on again. He only had one chance. And he discarded it. <clears throat> the blue jay, he comes running over. He goes, ah, blue is my favorite color. He picked up that coat. He put it on and it fit like a glove. Perfect. And it was so comfortable. He was getting warm. The hat fit good and had that really nice point to it. And then now he could fly, and he took off, and he's flying all around to this very day. You see the blue jay. He's got that beautiful blue coat. He's got that cool hat that has a point. The turkey buzzard reached back in. He pulled out another coat, and this one was really nice. It was brilliant red. It was almost all red except for a little bit by the hat. And he was looking at it. He goes, wow, everybody will see me. You know, I'll stand out. Everybody will see me. So I'll try it on. It's okay. It was a little snug. Trying it, he goes, oh, this is nice. He almost kept it, but out of the corner of his eye, he saw another one that looked even better. Took that red coat off, and he threw it on the ground. He could never put it on again. The cardinal comes running over. He picks up that coat, and red's his favorite color. So that cardinal picked up that coat, and he put it on. It fit like a glove, just right. And he says, boy, this is sharp. 
Everybody's looking at me. Watch this. And he took off and he could fly all around. You see a cardinal today. He stands out among the green trees. He's just like a beacon. He's really cool looking. And he has that point to his hat too. So he was happy. Now Turkey Buzzard reached back in, pulled out this one coat, and boy, it was so light and fluffy. Man, this is nice. He goes, oh, I bet it's warm. A little bit of brown and blacks and a little bit of speckles on him. And he was looking at it. He tried it on. Oh, the body fits pretty good. He flapped his wings. Well, oh, I better put the hat on. He could barely put the hat on. It was so tight. It was almost like 20 sizes too small. Just barely put it on top of his head. It just wouldn't fit. And he's like, oh, that's too bad. This is nice. He's like, well, I can't live with this. This is uncomfortable. So he took that off and he threw it on the ground. Off to the side was the owl. And he was so cold. He didn't care what it looked like. He didn't care if it even fit. And that owl, what he did is he went over, he pushed everybody aside. He says, get out of my way. And he grabbed that coat. He tried it on and it fit really good. Then he put the hat on, but the hat was also small on him. So what happened is it was so tight around his neck, it started to cut off the circulation. And his eyes got bigger and bigger and bigger, just like that guy. And as he put the hat on, the face went Phew! went flat, like that guy right there. <laughs> but he was content because now he had a warm coat because it was so nice and fluffy. And he took off. And you see him today, he's wearing that same coat. Big eyes and a flat face. But one by one, Turkey Buzzard reached into that bag. He pulled out a coat. Each one was different. And every time he tried one on, he always saw one that looked even better. And he would take that off and throw it down on the ground. Every time he kept doing that, he kept seeing one that looked even better. It was till finally he reached way down the bottom, felt around, pulled out this one coat, and he's like, oh my God, this thing's ugly. It was a dull brown, it looked dirty, had cobwebs all in it, and you could see moths flying off, and he was like, oh, it doesn't even smell good. He goes, I'm not even going to try this on. He goes, he threw it away, reached back into that bag, felt around, there was nothing left. He's like, uh-oh. Looked in there, turned it upside down, shook it, nothing came out. Turned it inside out. He's like, oh no. And then he looked down and he had tried on every single coat and taken every one off. He could never put them on again. So he was stuck with that ugly brown coat. So he, what can I do? He went over, took it, shook it out as best he could, cleaned it off the best he could. All those moths go flying off. He's looking at it, he could see threads and hanging off, and he's like, this thing's gonna fall apart. He goes, well, may as well try it on. He's trying it on, put the body fit okay. Oh, it's not too bad. Then all of a sudden his pant legs fell right off. Just ripped right off. He's like, oh my God, look at this. He's got those bony white legs. He's like, oh, I look ridiculous. He's putting a hat on and trying to put that on. That rip, that rips right off too. And he's like, oh, great. I don't have any feathers on my head or my legs. So he took off. And he goes around and around and around in circles because he looks so silly. He doesn't have any feathers on his head. So when that sun beats down on him, he gets sunburnt. That turkey buzzard today, you see him around. He's got a red head, no feathers on his legs. And that's why you rarely see him land because he doesn't want anybody to see how silly he looks. <laughs> and that's the end of that story. Mm -hmm.